Hello and welcome to On The Bench Extra, where we're talking nothing but football each week here on Estuary TV. Joining me this week is, of course, this wise lad, Tom Reid. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you, Tom. On the show, we're reviewing and previewing the games involving local sides, plus we will be talking about the English teams and their chances in the Champions League. As usual, you can find us on social media. Details are on your screen now of where you'll find us. So, European qualifying, um, England's result against Switzerland, Tom. Yeah. Fantastic win. What did you make to the performance? Oh, uh, well, the performance was a lot better than the game against Norway. Um, I think against Norway, we looked quite flat and just quite out of ideas and quite tired, I think. And then, obviously, we played Switzerland. We knew we had to improve if we were going to lose, and we did, and we deserved the win, I think, in the end. I think the side looked really balanced. I think it looked a lot better. Like you said, the Norway performance was boring. I fell asleep watching the game against <laughs> Norway. It was, it was that poor. I think the, the balance looked a lot better and players looked to be quite confident as well. I think Alan Shearer fell asleep as well. Did he? he said that, yeah. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, but the game, it was, it was much better. I think the diamond in midfield worked for Roy. Um, um, yeah, it was a good balance. I think we, we've got the, the right players, I think, to do that. And it's just a case of, because they're all young lads. Yeah. So just get used to that formation and we're going to get better, surely. We've got to get better. Did you see the Wales game? Gareth Bale, I think, was the star man, obviously, carried the team. But again, this year they've got a better chance as well because it's a 24-team tournament rather than a 16. So that third place it gets into a playoff. So I think Wales have got a good chance this year. Yeah. Did you see the pitch played on it? It looked like Bradley 3G. <laughs> yeah, it won the best. There was, was black it? bubbles going everywhere. It was horrific. It was just a makeshift bit of grass, wasn't it, I think, yeah. for the Andorans. Yeah. But there's uh, good results as well for Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland. They've done really well. Yeah, I think all round for this sort of the UK sort of sides, it's it's been good. I think and it might surprise a few people and all qualify. Even Scotland looked good, even though they lost to Germany. They put up a fight actually. I think the Germans will look well. They'd, they'd probably be worried the next time they played them because I'm sure Scotland are capable of pulling a result out of the bag and surprising the Germans. How many do you think are going to qualify out of the British teams, the UK teams? <clears throat> uh, I'll say three. Three. Don't ask me which. <laughs> I was going to say, do you, do you think England? <laughs> I think England will, yeah. England are pretty much bob on to do it. Then I think well, Scotland and Wales, I think I think Wales will this, this, for this tournament, yeah. We hope so. We need as many British teams as we can to get through. Yeah, because when England get knocked out, we can support them then. Now let's reflect on the recent games involving our local sides. It was Derby Delight for Lincoln City on Tuesday as they beat Grimsby Town 3-2 at Sinsel Bank with Hamza Ben Sharif scoring the winner. Craig Disley and John Paul Pittman twice drew Grimsby level. Last weekend, Scunthorpe went down 2-0 away at Bristol City with Greg Cunningham and Aidan Flint scoring for the hosts. Cleethorpe's Town beat Loughborough University 5-2 in the FA Vars first qualifying round. Elsewhere in the competition, Louth Town won 2-1 against Aylston Park with a last-minute penalty and Grimsby Borough were thrashed 6-0 against Clipston. Let's now take a peek at some of the action from Sinsel Bank on Tuesday. It was Lincoln's first win over Grimsby since 2006 and this one attracted a crowd of over 5,000. Wide again. This time it's Tomlinson. Gets the cross in. Headers there. That's 1 0. Lincoln City take the lead. There was a lack of marking at the back there. Tomlinson got a perfect cross in. And Burrow got the head on it. Put it past the outstretched arm of McEwen. Oh, good header on. Nobody there again for town. The referee's given a penalty. I don't think that was. Tomlinson takes. Oh, he's missed it. Brown. Penalty spot. Keeper comes out. Misses it. In it goes. That's the equaliser. And Disley has the goal. Three minutes to go to half time. Into the corner of the net. Past the outstretched arms of. This might be running this off, I think. Big knock, loses out. Penalty again. In it comes. And in it goes. Thought Matthew had got it at first. He was very, very close to it. Big top. Pittman's there. Loses out. Disney. And now John Lewis takes it up. Gets it through to Pittman. Still Pittman. Goal. Pittman gets the equaliser. 13 minutes gone in the second half. Pittman makes it 2-2. Good play by Pittman. Gets it on the left boot and puts it wide of the keeper into the top corner. And it comes. Dangerous. It's there. And I think that was Ben Sharif. 
pulling him all over the place. Nothing's going to be given. The goal stands. So, Reedy, match reaction to the to the big derby. It's heartbreaking to concede in the last few minutes of the game. Obviously, at that point, it was two two, and maybe a fair result. Um, obviously, there were, there was two penalties. One was missed by Lincoln. I think at least one of them was a penalty. Not not both. Um, so on the night, you know, overall, possibly a fair result. Maybe a point for town would have, would have been fair. Did you take the missed penalty for Lincoln? Well, it looked I, like one of yours. I, I give Paul a ring and asked him, but he, he said no. Nah, he's going <laughs> to not let me this week. <laughs> Disappointing result for town, conceding yeah. in the last few minutes. Well, both teams have had a great start to the season, um, so it was always going to be a tough game. It, there was no favourite. I think it was going to go either way. Okay. Managers are always looking over their shoulder because of the results on the pitch. This week's chosen manager for sack or stick is former now Mariners boss Nicky Law, presently at Alfreton. So, Tom, Nicky Law, Alfreton, it's not been a great start to the season. No, it's not. He's obviously, you know, you've got the stats that, it's, it's, well, he's it's, it's, it's the worst team in the league. Um, you know, no wins. Um, I think the goal difference is horrendous. So, it, yeah, eyes are on him for obviously the, the, the wrong reasons, but rightly. Yeah, I've got the goal difference here for you, Reedy. The, uh, they've scored five in eight games. They've conceded 23. Obviously, seven of those were, were against Grimsby. Um, the goal difference is minus 18, which is a pretty shocking start. They've drawn one, lost seven out of eight. At this stage of the season, yeah, that goal difference is horrendous. Do you think they need to look into the, the defence then? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm no genius, but if I was the manager, I'd be looking at my defenders and... Um, Defensive, like defensively as a team, and thinking where are we going wrong? Then let's let's have a look at this. We're not winning games. What, what's going wrong? I mean, I saw them against Grimsby, Alfreton, and they looked absolutely bereft of confidence. They just didn't look like a team at all. Again, that, that could be a factor: confidence, not just ability, and you know the coaching or whatever. It could be the confidence of the team, and, and maybe the manager's not quite sure where he wants to go. Where he wants to go with the team? Should they get some of these confidence coaches in, maybe to to build the players' sort of morale up? Yeah, get them chanting before the game. And yeah, we can do it. Get some R&B on before the game. Well, get, Scott, get the changing room booming. As Scott does. It, Scott does, exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's the secret behind town success, maybe. I think it is the R&B tunes, I think. And the house tunes as well. Yeah, and them. And we could get you singing, maybe, Reedy. No, I'll go that far. <laughs> <laughs> this week's head-to-head -head challenge is a bit different. Reedy and I attempt the yes-no question. Are you a professional footballer? Once. Will England qualify for Euro 2016? Perhaps. Will Lincoln City finish higher than Grimsby Town this season? Oh, that's a tough one. Will you win the challenge? Not this time. You're taking a bit long to, to get an answer out. I know. I'm. Do you think you're taking too long? Possibly. I think you're taking too long. I think the viewers are going to think you're taking Maybe too so. long. I think you're cheating, don't you? Do you? Yeah, I really do. Ask me, Mum. <laughs> did Lincoln City win this weekend? I think they did. Are you a footballer? Once upon a time. Are you a footballer? Once upon a time I was. Will Scunthorpe go down this season? Very likely. Is Angel Di Maria going to be value for money? Unlikely. What do you think to the current economic crisis? It's poor. Do you think Luis Suarez will bite again? Maybe. Do you think Luis Suarez looks like the Milky Bar kid? Do you think so? See how Mr Reid got on in part two. The Champions League starts this coming week, so Reedy, your thoughts on the four English clubs that are involved? Well... I think Man City have got the, the brown end of the stick again. They've got obviously the <laughs> toughest group. I mean, what is it? Bayern, um, obviously the hardest team. They can't avoid Bayern, can they? No, they, they can't. They, like they seem to get Bayern all the time. Um, they've definitely got a difficult group. Um, so you're looking at Bayern Munich, Manchester City, obviously, CSK, Moscow, which is a difficult away tie, and Roma, who are a, a good Italian side. <clears throat> well, yeah. I mean, obviously, comparing it to the, other, the groups that the other English lads got, yeah, it's the toughest. Obviously, Liverpool got Madrid, Arsenal got Dortmund, Chelsea got Schalke, but they're nowhere near as tough as, as Bayern and CSKA. That's a tough trip to go to Moscow, you Definitely. know, on like a November's evening. And then, obviously, Roma are tough as well. Freezing cold, people will have the snoods on, won't they? Minus 20, you know, icicles on your nose. I don't think the players like that very much. Won't fancy it at all. I mean, Chelsea's group looks like it seems to be the easiest with, with Schalke, Maribor and Sporting Lisbon. It's, it, they should get through that, surely. They should win the group. I'd, I'd be disappointed uh, in Chelsea if they didn't get through that because I think they're Premier League favourites, so they should they should win that group. You fancy Chelsea for the Premier League? I do, mate. Yeah, and I think I think on that back on the back of that, I think they'll do well in the Champions League as well. They're a strong side this season. Do you think they'll win Champions League? I won't put it past them. Look what happened the year they did win it. 
I think uh, when Andre Villas Boas was in charge in the group stage, they were nearly going out of that at one, that point, and then yeah. obviously they got a new manager and went on and won it. I think it's going to take a lot to to outgun Bayern and Barcelona, Real Madrid. I think they're the big dogs out there in the competition. They'll be tough to beat. I, I think Real Madrid for me are probably the favourites for it to win it again. Yeah, you think? I, I have to say that. Yeah, I think they are. I fancy. I, I mean, if Manchester City can get through the group, I think they've got the sort of nucleus of the squad, a strong set of players, and good backup to go to go as far as they want to, really. Does they decide where they can go then, do they? They can, yeah, of course <laughs> yeah. they do. They've got Tevez back. You know? I mean, well, <laughs> uh, look at Arsenal. I mean, are they are they sort of dark horses this year? I mean, do they? I don't think they've got a strong enough squad. I don't think the the backup they've got strong enough. They've got great players like Ozil and Sanchez and yeah. and whatever, but. I just don't think that they've got it to do it I in Europe. I think every year they fail around March time in the quarter-final stage, semi-final stage. They just, they, I think they're missing something. But again, are they are they are they dark horses? It could well be. What about an Italian club? I, I fancy Juventus. Maybe. Yeah, they're on the up. Juventus are on the up. PSG as well. Obviously, they're spent big in a couple of seasons, so they should have the the players to to challenge for that. Okay. Here's this week's halftime teaser. Zlatan Ibrahimovic became the leading goal scorer for Sweden with his 50th goal in 99 games. But what was significant about that goal? Welcome back. Before the interval, I asked you, Zlatan Ibrahimovic became the leading goal scorer for Sweden with his 50th goal in 99 games. But what was significant about that goal? The answer is he has now scored in every minute of a football match. What a ridiculous stat. Let's look at this weekend's upcoming games involving the local side. So, first of all, Hull City versus West Ham, Tom. What do we think to Hull's chances, first of all? Well, it's Premier League back in action after a week off. I'm sure it's been alright for some of the lads that weren't playing in the internationals, so they'll be fit and raring to go. Uh, they've got new sign-ins, which I'm sure you're dying to see as well. Oh, yeah. Um, all the old Gaston. Yeah. And uh, Ben, Benjamin Haitamafa. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how the new lads get on, I think. I think, yeah, hopefully they'll get a, a chance in the game. Um, just looking at the stats between Hull and West Ham, the last meeting was on the 28th of September 2013. Hull won 1-0 at home. So that bodes well, Yeah, surely. It's, it's a win. Um, don't matter if you win 10-0 or 1-0, at the end of the day it's three points. So I think Hull have got the minerals, mate, to go, go far this season. I think they'll do all right. And Again, if they want to be in the top half, they should be beating teams like West Ham, like in and around them. Without a doubt, yeah. They're a team of a similar standard. Yeah. A bit of pressure on Sam Allardyce, as always. We mention it every week. Yeah. So a win for Hull would be good. Going on to Scunthorpe, they're away at Chesterfield. Well, look at Scunthorpe at the moment. This, they obviously got that win last weekend. They've just come, just lost again this uh, just weekend gone. So it's it's going to be tough for Scunthorpe, I think, wherever they go, because teams are going to like target them now and know that there's no confidence there or not much confidence. So I think teams will have a go. And again, Scunthorpe will be under the cosh for a bit. Difficult league as well. Anyone yeah. can beat anyone in that league, it seems. Yeah, I think I think you're right, mate. Obviously, Scunthorpe, they're struggling. But they might go and beat top next week. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's weird. Last meeting between the teams was a one-all draw. Grimsby at home to Torquay. That's another tricky game for town, one of the relegated sides from last season. Yeah, it, it'll be tough. But again, like Scott said last week, Grimsby have got a good squad this year to compete from your starting eleven to the lads coming off the bench. So, they sh again, they should have enough to at home to, to beat Torquay, I think. But you might be happy with a point. Fingers crossed for a win. Yeah. It's now time for Reedy's challenge this week. Here it is. Will Cleve Pops Town win their FA Cup tie against Carlton Town? Possibly. Do you think Hull City ladies will get promoted this season? They might do. Will Hull City ladies get promoted next season? Could do. Do you like watching them? I really do. Do you fall asleep watching England against Norway? I may have done. <laughs> will Grimsby Borough get out of the relegation zone? I don't think so. Will it be tough? Really tough. Will Luis Suarez be a star at Barcelona? You'll have to ask Reedy. Do you think he'll move to Madrid one day? Reedy's the expert. <laughs> Can Mario Balotelli stay away from fireworks at Liverpool? Possibly. Will he stay away from his kitchen? He really will. Do you think he's got a kitchen? Possibly. Should Petter check out of Chelsea? Check out of Chelsea? I like that. He should. Will Courtois remain number one? He will. <laughs> Is Roy Hodgson the man to take England forward? Maybe. Will he take them backwards? I think he could. Did you enjoy that one, Reedy? Very much indeed. Very good. Another team that's going well at the moment is Cleethorpe Town. Earlier this week, we went down to speak to Chairman Dave Patterson to find out about the club's progression and preparation for their FA Cup tie against Carlton Town FC. 
Mark has just got the team spirit back. Um, he's, uh, he's got the dressing room. Everybody in the dressing room uh, want to fight for each other. Uh, and when they, they cross that white line, you know, they're all for one and uh, it's great to see. Now we're involved in, in uh, not only the FA Cup and the VARs, we're also involved in the Northern Counties League Cup. Um, so those, you know, do take uh, a lot of work and a lot of effort to, for the players. So we will be playing Saturday, uh, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday for, for probably into December. I couldn't have wished for a better start. Um, hopefully we can continue it. We know it's going to be tough. Probably finishing the top 10 would be brilliant for us in, in, the, uh, in the, our first season in the Premier League. Uh, and we also said uh, to have a good cup run, which we're having. You can't, you can't believe, you know, that, we're, that Cleethorpe Town is actually playing in the FA Cup. Um, you know, everyone sees the, the final in May um, as a great finale, but to our, ourselves, um, just to be in it at, at the very beginning is, is just a fantastic achievement. The FA Cup's going to be tricky, you know. I mean, obviously, um, as the rounds progress, better teams come in from a higher league, so it's really difficult. Um, but if we could get through this round um, against Carlton and then, um, then progress to the next one, which we will probably... Um, draw another uh, team from a higher league uh, would be fantastic. So Reedy, some exciting times ahead for Cleethorpe Town, FA Cup clash against Carlton. Yeah, very much so. Obviously the last round for them was, was a right game. Obviously that had everything really, so maybe more of the same in this one. And again, if they can win that, get to the next round, who knows where they can go. Ma do you think there'll be plenty of goals, red cards again, like there was in the last round? I'm sort of hoping there is, obviously, but not for Cleethorpe Town. But, uh, you know, it, hopefully a game that's got everything. Classic FA Cup clash. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the big stories on the back pages this week. So first of all, we'll go with the Grimsby Telegraph. Um, we look at Town's defeat to Lincoln. Uh, Paul Hastie says, we let them off the hook, relating to the missed chances that, that Grimsby had. Yeah, obviously, ob we saw the highlights earlier in the show. That there was some, um, you know, Lincoln obviously missed the penalty, but Grimsby had some good chances as well. And then that, that third goal in the last few minutes of the game that Grimsby conceded, it, you could defend that. You know, I think that was a defensive mistake rather than pure quality from Lincoln. So I think Town stabbed himself in the foot from that corner, I think. He must be disappointed conceding three as well. Uh, Town don't usually concede a hell of a lot of goals. But yeah, they've been tight at the back in the past four or five games. So, yeah, I mean, it obviously it's, it's devastating for Paul, I would imagine, in, in a derby to concede three because normally if you score two at Lincoln you're probably going to win the game. If you, you expect to win, yeah. away from home especially. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at the Sun, um, we're now looking at Theo Walcott coming back to action because he's, uh, he's fit <coughs> and he's fast and he has the best legs at Arsenal. Yeah, according to Theo, he, he said he's got the best legs in the club. I don't quite know what he means by that. Do you mean looking or as in, in terms of fitness? Has he, has he shaved them and had them tanned? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but obviously he's rapid, the lad's rapid. And it's going to be devastating to see Welbeck and Sanchez up front with him. So I think, yeah, he's, he's sort of trying to put the, the feelers out to the rest of the Premier League now that I'm back. He's another addition to the Arsenal squad. He's going to be he's going I think to be he can make a difference, to be honest. He can. He yeah. is a quality player who runs at defenders. They hate that. Yeah, he is. You're right. And looking at the eye, we are looking at Paul Scholes saying he was impressed with England and their energy, but he'd play Wilshire further forward. Um, considering he was slating Wilshire last year, saying he wasn't good enough. If I were Jack Wilshire, I'd be happy with that comment, I think, from a legend like Paul Scholes. Um, I mean, do you play him further forward or is he, is he sort of a creative goal scoring kind of midfielder or is he the, the one that pings it about and sort of, you know, what, what is he? We don't know. He's still quite young. He is. He is a young player, but do you think he's fitting into the current England setup? Because I thought against the Swiss, he didn't really do uh, a lot. He lost the ball quite a bit as well. I think he's been, you know, brimming on the squad for the last few seasons. Like he's not, he, obviously he's been involved in the setup for a few seasons now, but he's not quite a regular, I wouldn't say. But I think he should be. I think give him the chance and let him play that role long enough and I think he'll be alright. Who do you think he should play in there with? <sighs> Tough question. I mean, Henderson? Do you, Henderson, yeah. Do you, I do thought you, Delph did really well. I, I was, was really impressed with yeah, Delph. I was impressed with Delph, actually, after his, after his mad uh, ten minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But impressed. we'll have to see. We'll have to see who they put in the squad. Could yeah. be anyone. I don't, I don't want Roy's job, to be honest. It'd be tough. Neither do I. Hull City owner Asa Malam has recently committed sponsorship to Hull City ladies football team in ways of matchday costs and kits and other things. Dan Kemp spoke to him during the week about this. I sponsor the ladies because <clears throat> I'm all for uh, 
ladies' football. It is most enjoyable, actually, first time. I watch on television, but this is the first time I come to live match, and it's very interesting and uh, uh, fantastic to watch. And I would like to promote the ladies' football in Hull and East Yorkshire, and uh, that's why I sponsor 100%. Same any sport, uh, I'm all for uh, support most sports I can if I can. Uh, squash, uh, youth football clubs, uh, many youthful football clubs, some rugby clubs. Uh, so it's the same thing. I would like to promote the ladies in uh, East Yorkshire and to become a big international sport. sport. So, Reedy, what do you think to the fact that the Hull City chairman is, is promoting women's football in, in a way, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. You've got a, a premiership chairman pumping money into a, a ladies' football team. I mean, obviously, it's great for the women's game. It's going to raise the profile of that, that club. And then maybe other chairmen and other you know, sponsors might want to pump money into the ladies' game as well and make, make their league even better. Could you see other chairmen doing that from other Premier League clubs? You know what? I can, I think. I think the way the Premier League's going and there's some silly prices going around there, they might look elsewhere to sort of say, actually, we'll start a new project. We'll invest in a women's team and see if we can build that up. Well, that we, have, we ever see the money that we see in the men's game in the women's game, especially at that sort of elite level? Never. I, I can't see that. It's going to be tough. I mean, you, are they really going to compete with men's football in the Premiership? We don't know. We don't know. It's not been done. We need to ask someone, I think. I think if they maybe get sponsorship in, they get people back in them, I think that could be a way for the, the women to raise the profile of maybe the game. Maybe in the more. next 10 years, 20 years, who knows? Watch his space. Yeah. Asim Alam also spoke to the media on Thursday regarding speculation surrounding Hull City and its ownership. Again, let's hear from the man himself. We stated earlier this year that the club would be for sale should our attempt to globally promote Hull Tigers as a brand name and as a playing name be blocked. Uh, this announcement is in accordance with my decision 10 months ago that I would walk away within 24 hours. Until the conclusion of the appeal or the sale, the appeal or the sale, whichever comes first, we will remain fully committed to the club. And we'll have a more in-depth reaction on that next week. On that note then, it's all we've got time for. Don't forget to tune in to us next week for more of the same. Keep up to date with us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and email, which is on the bench at estuary.tv. Thank you to my partner in crime, Mr Tom Reid. For this week, it is goodbye. <laughs>